Hello vinyl community, Bradley here. Um, I got a couple classic jazz albums to show you and tell you a little bit about, so uh, I hope you stay tuned for this. They're both really good albums, each one of them's different. But, uh, so let's get on with it. Uh, the first album, it is a Blue Note issue from, uh, well, it was uh, Kenny Burrell, Midnight Blue. Now this was released in, uh, well, it was recorded in January of 1963 and released in May of 1963. Uh, Kenny Burrell, a jazz guitarist. And of course, this album, was engineered by Rudy Van Gelder at his studios in New Jersey. Now this particular album, uh, it will probably uh, just about always come in the top 40 albums, uh, top jazz albums of all times. Uh, this album, which this particular album is a uh, 75th anniversary reissue on Blue Note, uh, which I highly recommend. Uh, you can get them for like really cheap prices, and they're pretty good uh, recordings. Uh, now this album, like I said, it's uh, jazz guitar, uh, more of a bluesy jazz guitar. Um, I've always liked the Blue Note packaging. You know, first of all, it's great music. It's recorded excellently by Rudy Van Gelder. And part of the uh, Blue Note packaging is most of the time they would have a photograph, whether it be full cover or cropped. And that was, uh, the photos were taken during the actual sessions by uh, one of the co-founders. A blue note, Francis Wolf. Then you had a uh, man whose name was Reed Miles. He did the graphic design on a lot of these uh, blue note covers of these classic covers, which I just really love it. So, anyhow, a little uh, background on Kenny Burrell. He's from Detroit, born and raised in Detroit. And uh, he was one of several Detroit jazz musicians who went on to become quite famous. Um, in fact, he was in an early group with Donald Byrd, uh, Elvin Jones, and Yusuf Latif. And of course, Detroit had, uh, they had like Joe Henderson, who was from Lima, Ohio, but he moved up north to Detroit. Uh, Ron Carter was a part of the scene. Curtis Fuller, the trombonist. So Detroit had a very, very vibrant uh, jazz scene during the 50s. And uh, Kenny Burrell is known, let's see, for recording with Jimmy Smith, the B3 organist. Uh, I think he appeared on like 25 albums with Jimmy Smith, uh, under probably Jimmy Smith's name. And actually, uh, Kenny Burrell put out five or six albums on Blue Note under his own name. And, uh, and he also recorded quite a bit for Prestige, Verve, uh, Concord, and Fantasy record labels. So he was 32 years old when he recorded this album. And he would later, in the late 70s, uh, he would go on to become a uh, professor of music at UCLA. So let's get on with the uh, tracks here. The first track is Chitlin's Concarni, which you, that's what's been playing in the background. Well, first of all, sorry, <laughs> I will name the musicians on this album. Uh, of course, you have Kenny Burrell on guitar, Stanley Turrentine on tenor sax, 
which he played a lot with Kenny Burrell and Jimmy Smith also. On bass, you have Major Holly Jr. On drums, Bill English. And on conga, Ray Barreto. So Ray plays on a couple songs. Congo. Conga. So, like I said, the first song, Chitlin's Con Carney, uh, it's got congas, very prominent, uh, very nice guitar. It's a blues, as are probably most of these songs. Um, and uh, this music reminds you of if you were in a uh, small jazz club back in the 50s or 60s, smoke all over, and you had like a glass of wine or a cup of a uh, glass of bourbon or scotch on the rocks. So anyhow, the next song is called Mule, which is a blues. And on this song, it's kind of neat because the uh, the bass, Major Holly Jr., um, he slides up on a lot of the notes, which gives it a very unique sound. You don't really hear that too much uh, in an entire song or most of the song. So I don't know, I don't know how far he slides up. It sounds like more than a step. I don't know. <laughs> But it sounds really good. Okay, the uh, third song is called Soul Lament. And uh, all of these songs were written by Kenny Burrell, unless I say so different. <laughs> uh, so Soul Lament, uh, maybe a uh, little touches of flamenco uh, guitar in there. Beautiful. And the last song on the first side is the title track, Midnight Blue. Uh, it's more upbeat. Uh, it swings. And uh, it's, it's probably one of the few of the uh, non-hardcore blues song on, uh, on this album. <clears throat> okay, flip it over on the B side. It opens with Wavy Gravy. Uh, very nice walking bass. Again, you have Ray Barreto on the congas, which just really sets this song off. And all these songs are, uh, like I said, they're blues, but each one is different. You know, they're they're definitely uh, uh, different sounds on each uh, on each song, uh, but they fit together for the entire album. Uh, second song on the B side is a standard. It's called G Baby Ain't I, Ain't I Good to You, which is excellent. And it ends up with a blues called Saturday, Saturday Night Blues. So, uh, this album, like I said, the name is called Midnight Blue. It is the perfect album to put on at like 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night, around midnight. It's very, it's nicely laid back. Pour yourself a glass of wine or get a tumbler of scotch on the rocks and uh, just sit back and enjoy this album. So, I will rate this. I think I would rate this a five, of course. Uh, the album cover, it's way beyond five. I just absolutely love this, uh, the graphic art on this album. So I would highly recommend this. Uh, every, if you're getting into jazz, every jazz collection should have some jazz guitar in it, whether it be Kenny Burrell or whoever so okay second song or second album uh, it is it is a Miles Davis album and this will usually rank in the probably not the top hundred but the next hundred uh, only and I emphasize only because Miles probably has seven or eight other albums 
that would normally be higher ranked than this. So there's just a lot of really good Miles Davis. It is Miles Davis Milestones. And this particular pressing, uh, it is in mono. Uh, I think the last, I'm not sure if this is the last year or two, they've come out with this particular pressing. It's pressed at RTI, yeah, at RTI, 180 gram. Uh, and it does have the true mono as opposed to like reprocessed stereo or anything. And another thing I like about this, which I will ask you viewers out there, tell me, because I don't know. Uh, of course, it's a 6i label, but it comes in these. Is this a MoFi, MoFi uh, sleeve? Is that what they're called? I don't know, but I love them. They don't crinkle. So uh, I love that. So, let's talk a little bit, I'll take the uh, plastic off of there, about this album. Uh, Milestones, it is on Columbia Records. This was Miles' third album when he uh, signed with Columbia. Uh, it was recorded in April of 1958 and released in September of 1958. Uh, as Miles did on several re Columbia recordings, uh, probably most of them, it was recorded at the uh, Columbia uh, 30th Street Studios in New York, which was an old, uh, I believe, an Arme Armenian church previously. It was a huge place, huge room, cavernous. So that, <clears throat> that really gives these recordings are really good sound, natural reverb. So the players, uh, this would be considered uh, probably the Miles Davis first great quintet, although this is a sextet. <laughs> a little confusing. Uh, so the players on this album, of course, is Miles Davis on trumpet. Uh, Cannonball Adderley on alto sax, John Coltrane on tenor sax, Paul Chambers on bass, Red Garland on piano, and Philly Joe Jones on drums. So, uh, what a group. Uh, like I said, this uh, was released in 1958, 1958. Uh, in 1959, that's when Kind of Blue would be released. And the lineup is pretty similar, but not exactly. Uh, of course, on both albums, you've got Miles Davis, Cannonball Adderley, John Coltrane, and Paul Chambers. They were on both of these albums. Uh, now on Kind of Blue, Bill Evans replaced Red Garland and Billy Cobb replaced Philly Joe Jones. But other than that, <clears throat> pretty much the same group. And uh, like I said, this is the third Columbia record and I think he released maybe two of them after this until they got to kind of blue. So, so let's go over uh, the songs on here. Uh, on the first side, it opens up with a Jack, Jackie McLean tune written by Jackie McLean called Dr. Jekyll. Uh, this is a bebop song very upbeat and frenetic, <laughs> but excellent. Uh, second song on here is Sid's Ahead, written by Miles Davis. Uh, 
Now this song would be considered probably a modal song, more akin to what would be on Kind of Blue. And uh, I guess I didn't mention, on this album, there's two or three different styles of jazz on here. You've got some bebop, you've got some what you would call post-pop, and you also have a few modal tunes. So, okay, the, the last song on the first side is called Two Bass Hit, which was written by John Lewis and Dizzy Gillespie. Uh, many, many uh, jazz musicians have done this song. Excellent rendition. Okay, flip this over. <laughs> to side two, it opens with the title track called Milestones. I believe that's what it was actually called, Milestones. Well, actually, it was called Miles. And some people call it Milestones, the name of the album. But anyhow, this is a uh, very upbeat, it would be more of a modal song. Uh, Great Coltrane sax in here. Uh, now I do, and, and this is probably my favorite song on this album. And I was listening to it the other day and to the drums and it, it sounded a little different. Well, what Philly Joe Jones is doing, he's playing just just a little bit behind the beat, which that makes the song sound different and very unique. Um, and also I did kind of notice that it seemed like a couple times he almost, you know, got just a little lost because it's hard to play behind the beat. He doesn't do too many fills in this because it would be impossible, I think, to get back into that behind the beat. And these are like uh, rim shots, lightly. Uh, great solo by Cannonball Adderley. Okay, let's go to the second song called Billy Boy. And this is a traditional, I guess, writer's unknown. But this particular uh, arrangement was done by uh, Ahmad Jamal, the pianist. Uh, now this is really, really good. I love it. It's upbeat. Uh, the drumming, it kind of, it kind of showcases, it lets Philly Joe Jones showcase his drumming just, just a little bit. You know, not overly drum, long drum solo, but he has some really nice playing on this. So the last song is Straight No Chaser, written by Thelonious Monk. Uh, you know, it's a bebop-ish song. Uh, all the musicians are just cooking on this. Great, great sax playing, uh, great trumpet playing. Just can't beat it. So, like I said, this would normally come in in the second hundred of top jazz albums. Uh, what do I rate it? Of course, I rate it a five. It, this is a really, really good album. I, I like this period of uh, Miles' career. It, it sounds really good to me. And it kind of leads up to what uh, Kind of Blue would become. As far as the album cover, uh, uh, it's okay. Give it a four. <laughs> it's not a Blue Note album cover. But uh, anyhow, I would, uh, you know, the, I would highly recommend this album if you want to. If you want to get a Miles Davis album, there are just so many good albums to pick from. Uh, I myself 
really like this period of his uh, playing. Uh, so I would rank this right up there. So uh, that's it for my uh, jazz review today. So uh, I'd like to wish everybody happy holidays and uh, thank everybody for watching my videos and, and commenting. So uh, I will see you later.